Hi hey everybody, um, today I want to talk a little bit about using the MACD uh, to try to better understand um, charting. So um, I use the MACD almost every day, um, really every day, um, and um, it's very valuable uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, some of those reasons that MACD is helpful is it helps you identify the trends, uh, the momentum. Um, I especially use it for reversals and divergences. Um, you can also spot breakouts, um, different kinds of cycles, um, and you can also um, find uh, new types of support and resistance that are harder to find um, using just the price action. Um, so, and then just general uh, patterns, channels, pivot, and pivot points um, you can also use MACD for. So right here we're looking at the MACD on the lower graph here. Um, I'll show you my settings. Um, so basically I have a fast period and a slow period. Um, and then a signal period. So the signal is the red line, the MACD line is the white line, and then you have a histogram in the center showing the difference between the signal line and the MACD line. So the, that, that difference right there is measured right here. So one interesting thing is that there's different types of MACDs um, for each time frame, right? So um, when you do this um, fast period and slow period, this is based on the time frame. So it uses eight minutes, and 16 minutes so if you're trying to find the trend or the momentum for the day um, you might just want to switch to the daily chart or maybe an hourly chart so I'm gonna switch to the daily chart so you can see so you can see that here um, so in general what happens is that when the MACD is positive that's positive momentum um, when it's negative that's negative momentum or a negative trend um, so there's another way also is to tell by the angle of the slope. So not only does this show that it's a positive trend, but it's also showing a downtrend too at the same time. Um, that's the bell for the day. So different parts of the MACD, although you will be on a, so this is on a positive trend here, and this is on a negative trend, um, but still positive. And it's not until it reaches just about in here where this candle really dropped, and you can see the drop was really significant right on that candle, um, that you really start to say you're in a downtrend um, or negative momentum. The other interesting way to measure the momentum on the graph um, is to look at the chart in terms of the histogram, right? So, <coughs> <coughs> red candles on the histogram typically mean that it's downtrend um, of some sort, um, and green candles typically mean it's an uptrend of some sort. So even in this downtrend here, you do have some green candles in that, and you can see the green candle showed up right there. Um, so it is a little bit of an uptrend um, within that downtrend. Um, and that's the sign of what we're going to talk about next, which is reversals and divergences. So there's at least two major types of reversals um, that I like to talk about um, with you. Um, one is how to use the um, max and min for the MACD, and then using that, excuse me, as a guide. So you'll notice that I switched time frames here, um, and sometimes it's easier to see the, the reversals on lower time frames um, or kind of a time frame that you're mainly interested in. So I'm going to switch to the minute time frame just for a second so you can see um, how this works. So if I draw a horizontal line right here and right here, you can see for the day um, that we had some reversals right around these points on the MACD. So the MACD hit a high point here, and then there's kind of like an inner reversal in here. So typically you'll see at least two major points uh, on these reversals. You'll see kind of an inner reversal and kind of an outer reversal. Um, and those um, will be the maximums and kind of the minimum range for your reversals with kind of a range uh, in between. Now, these are a little bit different. Um, you know, on a typical chart, what happens is that you measure a reversal based on kind of a volume profile. So you can see um, here in the chart um, that we expect this to be a level of support um, right in here. Um, so as the, as the price drops, it kind of bounced around here and stayed at the level of support. And then we have basically a level of resistance on the top. So these are very different because these are kind of intraday movements um, for the MACD. So if you zoom in here uh, on the MACD, you can see what we did is we marked up these reversal charts here. So I'm going to clear off these drawings just to make it a little bit more clear before we talk about divergences. Um, but again, there's many different types of divergences. 
Um, but what you want to do for a divergence is you draw a line uh, essentially on the lower half and then on the top half, right? And you can kind of see uh, what's going on here, right? So you can see there's maybe another line here going down um, here, right? So basically what this suggests is that this is all saying an uptrend, right? Even from the downtrend here. So you're seeing that that pretty much hit the peak right here and then it kind of continued down. So actually this line probably could be brought back over to here and brought down here. So it becomes a downtrend. So basically what happens is that when you see a trend that's kind of going up like this and the MACD is going down, that's called a divergence. One is doing the opposite of the other, right? So this one's also going down. This one's going down, but the line is going up. And you can see right at the end of the day, it did kind of prove that that reversal was, or that divergence is correct, right? So although this was going up, it did end up down at the end of the day there. And it seems like it might even continue down. Now it's really important to use different time frames uh, when studying these reversals and divergences. So basically right here, you can see that um, you know, most of the time that we do have more consistency on the daily chart. So you can see that's generally an uptrend here. So any 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 gap here is a little bit easier to spot. So you can tell that, yeah, this is definitely an uptrend on the MACD. Um, and, you know, we're basically heading down here. So that is a divergence um, in the last kind of this mini section right in here. Um, so that's kind of not really a great example of a divergence because it's kind of huge on the daily chart. Um, but if you get into the 60 minute chart, sometimes you can start to see these a little bit more clearly. So you can start to see um, here that we have kind of a downward trend. Oh, looks like some problem here. So on this here, um, you can kind of see there's kind of a downward trend with a convergence here, kind of a split here. So typically what happens on these intersections here like we have here drawn is that somewhere on the third we should see a pretty major change uh, perhaps even a further downtrend so it's kind of sticking to this until it gets to here and then it might even go up or it could go down it's more likely typically when it hits on the positive side and more likely to be a jump to the positive this is more likely to be a jump to the negative so although we are on the 60 minute chart you can see um, as we head back in time here, it's kind of taking a little while to load, um, that this has been breached before um, and it's kind of a trend that we see here and you can even try to draw a trend here um, to get a crossing further down. So this is maybe even on the fourth. Um, so as we look at these charts, we can say that maybe given this here, um, it could drop all the way to here. So, um, you know, that's just what we're seeing for now. So. And that really breaks back to tradition, maybe back to even in this drop here. So we are looking for a drop that could be pretty significant um, sometime in the next couple of days, just based on what we're seeing with the MACD here. Now, it's very important to look at both sides of the equation. You can also see there's a positive move up into here, right? So these peaks kind of generally, these lower lows, that looks pretty good there, and you can kind of see there's kind of a trend here. Now, this shows a kind of a break even on this. So the other side of the story on the bull side of the market is they're saying that this is just too low, and we need a break even point right around where we're at right now. So this is saying there's a story where once the, the bears are saying that it could be break, it could break all the way down. Um, maybe down to this level of the 3600 again, um, right, uh, in the next couple days. Um, or the uh, bulls are saying, well, this is kind of going to be a 38, 70, 78 kind of level based on the peaks here and the lows here. So in general, we're talking about different kinds of support and resistance. This is kind of like channels. Typically, when we think of support and resistance, we think of levels. So we think of horizontal lines. Um, draw on like for example here this is a level support and then we see a level resistance right in here so it is hard to say um, because these lines are kind of more channels so it is a level of kind of support down here because we see it gets low and then it kind of bounces up it gets low and bounces up it gets high and then maybe had a couple breaks in it so these breaks in here um, whether they're accurate or not we'll know in the next few days 
um, because maybe we should have drawn the chart a lot higher. So what this is saying is we're saying, you know, these, these lines here are saying draw it up here at uh, level 24 or so. So that to me signals um, that we should see a lot higher signs. So there is a whole side of the story here um, in the MACD that tells us that we should see quite high compared to the lows. The lows are down here at 11, um, right? And the, the high is at 24. So there are some other ways to tell um, kind of mini levels of support and resistance. Although this here, this is kind of kind of breaking right here. You can say that that's a level of support, right? So basically because it's kind of stabilizing at that price level, this change, this, up, this uptrend is kind of a level of support. It's kind of supporting that up, uptrend here, right? Um, whereas a sharp turnaround here does not, that's like a rejection. Um, and that would be a level of rejection. So, um, and you can see that the resistance was basically linked to this one up here. Um, uh, but you can see that this was even a sharper rejection right here, right? You can see that this was pretty sharp um, heading down into that. Anyway, um, that's about all I have to talk about for right now. There's a lot of more details um, to continue to look at. I'd also try to study these uh, histogram graphs. Um, and you can do a lot of the same technical analysis that we've been talking about, um, including the um, support and resistance lines right in here, for example, and use those to kind of also gauge um, where you are in terms of um, the price action. Um, anyway, so if you liked all this information, please like and subscribe. Be sure to send a little comment down below. I'd be glad to talk with you about details uh, within this discussion. Thanks so much. Have a great day.